ship went down When she made it home Molly kissed the ground I'm gonna row my boat Like Molly Brown So you have a new album coming out. It's called Until Now. I do. I have a new album coming out. Um, it's called Until Now, and there's a companion book of poetry called Until Now New Poems. Uh -huh. And uh, how, what's the relationship? Are, are the poems, the lyrics to the songs, or are there more to it than that? Um, a lot of, in terms of process, um, as a songwriter, I, I, many of my poems uh, or many of my songs will begin with poetry. Right. I, I do a lot of writing. Um, it's essays and short stories and poetry. And usually my songs will grow out of those writings, you know. Um, and when I, when I'm writing, you know, a new poem, I don't know if this is a poem that will become a song gotcha. or this is a poem that's just a poem in and of itself. So, uh, so um, I have three books of poetry and essays and short stories. So, um, and usually I release them as companion pieces. Gotcha. I see. Mm -hmm. So when do you know what happens to make a, a poem turn into a song from your point of view? Um, it just needs to be a song. Okay. And, and, and at that point, then I have all this language and some poetic uh, imagery. And then I take, uh, you know, take it to music and then the, the lyrics and the music happen together. But I have all this language I've, I've already been working with. Gotcha. So that's, that's generally my process. But you know, if you line up 10 songwriters, ask them their process. They will give you 14 ways that they do. Oh, definitely. So, yeah. <laughs> that's what makes it so interesting. <laughs> so that's usually how my, my, my process works. All right. So uh, the songs that uh, make up this album, when were they created, written, and recorded? Wonderful. Most of them were, were written in the last 18 months. Um, there were a couple that were, were, were uh, pre-COVID. Right. Um, so uh, many of them were written, you know, during this COVID experience. Um, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot on this album about um, being in process, uh, a lot on this album about um, how do we make sense in times that feel senseless. You know, right. the very first song, the first line is, you know, here in the great unraveling. So, so. <laughs> You know, with when in a time of great disruption or unraveling, you know, there's also a moment of great opportunity, right? Um, because we, you know, people get kind of stuck in their ways, or you know, or there's this perpetual motion machine that we that we uh, you know begin to live uh, that way, and um, sometimes it takes a moment when we stop or something big happens, and then there's this chance for reassessment for right. um, how might we do things differently? How might I do things differently? Um, you know, what, what did I learn? Um, so there's, you know, so there's that kind of a thread that runs through the album. And also because, you know, we all we're a little closer to home in a way, um, right. you know, what is it that grounds and creates resiliency and you know and sustains us sustains hope you know close in daily uh, on a daily um, you know and personal way right so where did you record the songs you have a home studio uh, is there a studio nearby or there's a studio near me that that I've worked with for several albums now and it's also an artist retreat center called it's airtime studios and the hundredth hill uh -huh. um, retreat center. So it was nice. Um, uh, you know, we actually, all the, all the artists, all the musicians who played on the album, we all kind of lived out there at the artist retreat and it became kind of an immersive experience. We could kind cool. of COVID pod, uh, though at that time we had all just been vaccinated. So uh -huh. it was uh -huh. one of the first chance, you know, chances that all of us had had to really be in one room playing together creating right. arrangements yeah. um there was a, a joyousness to that and i sure. think you can sure. hear that on the album too so did everybody have to be vaccinated in order to play on the record well when when it was first um when i first 
started to schedule it, we didn't know. Right. And so we had some pretty intense COVID um, protocols that we would have in place. Um, but fortunately, we were all able to get vaccinated before, be, you know, before the recording sessions. Right. So we could kind of we had we had our own little little pod out there. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the first song you mentioned is called "A Long Way Up," I believe. Is that a harmonium that's playing on that? Here in the great unraveling So much of this is baffling When breathing feels like gambling Nowhere to go but here uh, it's actually a field organ. It's, a field organ, okay. Uh, yeah, it's like a little foot pump organ. Really? Um, yeah, it's it, it's this really beautiful kind of soft, but it, but the, there's bellows. There's kind of a, a lot of air that moves with it. Right. Um, so yeah, there was something very um, soft and intimate about that kind of an organ. And also, there's you know, it's a it's a you know. Yeah, it's a little funky too. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's not organ. Yeah, yeah. So who's playing that? Was that Gary Walters that's playing that? Gary Walters. Yeah, he's. Um, I've been working with Gary for over fifteen years. He's been on several projects, and we tour often together. Right. Um, just a, a wonderful uh, pianist and human being. So, uh, and he 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 played the field organ on that song. Cool, cool, cool. Now, did I see that you've done a live stream concert recently? Yeah, on Sunday how, how did we that did. Go? A, <laughs> it went it. great. Um, you know, right after we recorded the album, the day after we recorded the album, all the musicians on the project, uh, we we filmed a concert. You know, just played the entire album through, and then a couple old favorite songs. Right, right. And then songs. Actually, I love featuring the musicians in the band. So, you know, several. You know, the most of the musicians in the band are composers in their own right so right. you know people um so we we're able to feature some of the artists that played on the album as well um it was it yeah it aired on mandolin uh, which is a streaming service that huh. my my husband actually was one of the co-founders co oh well there you go yeah and um and i've been very fortunate in that sense um in during this covid time period when I haven't been able to tour in person and I you know I, I usually have a, a pretty busy touring schedule um, I was able to do quite a bit of online work because uh -huh. uh, working through mandolin I created my own um, uh, video studio right right called available light studio so so that was you know I was I felt very fortunate because I was able to to still share music and do a creative community. Um, but that was an interesting thing too, because, you know, if recording is apples and li live in person music is oranges, then, yeah. you know, streaming is like Kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's an entirely, it's, it's another art form, right, you know, right. and, I think had, a lot of people are still figuring it out as well because, like you say, it is something that it, new and hasn't really been thought through completely. No, and uh, mandolin part of its uh, whole idea was being able to create, you know, high quality, not Facebook, you know, like high quality video, right. audio, right. Yep. Um, yep. and also creative community. There's right. a lot um, that we did to. Uh, allow feedback and for people to be able to talk to me during the show and being able to is that a good know, thing or a bad thing do you like getting that kind of feedback while you're performing um i don't read chat as it goes through um because that's just a little distracting yeah but, i can imagine um but actually i would have one of the en engineers would be sending me things from from the chat right uh you know uh, to a screen in the studio so I could they could send me things and I could oh well you know John from yep, yep, uh, yep. Ontario uh, asked this question and then I could talk about it so so if, it was nice um, you know finding ways to do creative community during COVID um, 
And I think, I think one of the things I was really happy to discover, you know, the more I found my, my own feet, you know, my grounding in this new art form, um, is that music and the spirit of music travels farther and wider than we might have, I might have right. ever imagined. <laughs> that it's stronger than a screen. So, yes. um, so, so that was a good discovery. Uh, but I'm also really looking forward to um, doing some touring this fall. Uh, right. It will be limited. Uh, uh, some shows have canceled and we're being very careful about COVID protocols. Um, you know, I, I take very seriously inviting people to a show that yeah, I'm sure. yep. is safe for them. Yep, yep, know. yep. It is interesting, though, how uh, resourceful pe the artists have been as far as having to make do with staying at home and being isolated and still being able to create music in a different way. Yeah, and I, I think that's another reason why the, the book of poetry um, happened. I, songs came hard, you right. know, I, they they did, they came, but they came hard this time, and which is unusual for me. I mean, writing songs is like breathing for me, and I, I think I have 19 albums trailing behind me. Um, I write a lot. And, I can tell. <laughs> That's an impressive um, body of work. <laughs> it, well, you know, I love to write songs. And right. uh, so it was interesting that during this time period, um, but the poetry was really flowing. And I think that, I think creativity that way, sometimes when one channel is, uh, is harder or blocked, you know, it's like water. Uh, you, you you see it happening with a stream. You know, if, if there's something that gets in the way, it finds another way around. And, right. um, and I think for a lot of us, we were finding finding our way around um, because um, because um, you know our regular patterns, the way we operate in the world, our our coping strategies. You know, like for some of us, it's like, whoa, there's you know, all my coping strategies and they're gone right. <laughs> because I can't access them right now. So what are other ways to um, to be creative? What's other ways to, um, you know, stay well and, you know, hopeful and, and, right. and grounded, you know? So, so I think, I think during the past, you know, 18 months, a, a lot of us have, you know, had a, a close look at, you know, what is it that right. uh, makes sense in senseless times? Right. So you've released a couple of tracks from the record so far, but it's being released, I think, on the 10th. So another one is Like Molly Brown. Yeah. What can you tell me about that one? I'm gonna roll my boat like Rosa Parks on that downtown bus trying to embark. Molly Brown. Well, uh, I do live out in the middle of the woods. I, I live, you know, acres and acres of woods and in the hills of, you know, uh, southern Indiana. It's where the glacier stopped. So, oh, okay. You, so you got to think of the Midwest is very flat, but yeah. actually it's very rolling and deep ravines. And so I go out and walk with my dogs just about every day. So um, spending time in the natural world is pretty important. And sometimes songs start there. You know, right. I'll be walking along and start singing something. Um, and a friend of mine had been texting with me earlier that day and said, you know, you know, Carrie, you're just a Molly Brown. You just like, you know, you just roll up your sleeves and, you know, you just keep on rolling. And, and, I, and I laughed and I said, I, I think you're right. You know, so that was like the thought that was like the, the seed for the song. And I, I wanted to really um, celebrate strong and resilient women that I've I've known in my own life and that the ancestors whose you know courageous lives you know are the shoulders we stand upon so so it was a song to kind of celebrate you know uh -huh. what keeps us resilient and 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 those ancestors as well yeah I see there's like kind of references to Rosa Parks and whatever in the mm -hmm. video so yeah yeah and do you have much to do with the video? 
Did you, you say you? I created the video myself. Yeah, yeah, I thought you might have. I was a videographer for it. Um, uh -huh. You know, I was an art major. <laughs> Can't stop. <laughs> I know. I mean, I was ticking off all the safe and secure professions you could have in your life. You know, right, like right. visual art, check. You know, yeah. like folk singing, check. Let's just line them up. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you uh, what are you gonna do on when the album is released? Do you have anything planned special? Um, well, you know the the online album release concert just happened, uh, right. though it is in a replay, so you can still get a ticket and see it oh, for good. thirty days. Cool. Um, and um, I I do have a touring schedule. I'll be going out on, in September, um, right. different parts of the country. So that'll start happening um having conversations about the album with wonderful folks like yourself <laughs> and, which i so appreciate and oh, um i have a podcast oh great so what's it called it's called the growing edge and it's with one of my favorite authors and i guess one of my favorite people on the planet uh parker j palmer okay. um he's a wonderful uh wonderful author um and so we have a podcast called The Growing Edge, and it explores, you know, what's on your growing edge, whether it's personally or vocationally or politically. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. A wonderful, right. wonderful guest. I, I, I love doing the podcast, and it comes out once a month, and okay. people can access that, you know, iTunes, wh wherever you get your podcast, you know, right. it's, right. it, it's kind of out there, ahead, um, yeah. or at our website, which is newcomerpalmer.com. Okay. Very good. Have you ever been to New Zealand? I haven't, but it is on my bucket list. Especially I, since you, you were explaining how, you know, when you're walking around and you see the rolling you know, fields and there's a lot of volcanic action here and a lot of rolling hills. Yes. You, you would uh, be inspired, I'm sure. I have to tell you, when I, when, I, when I saw your invitation to have this conversation, it's like, oh my gosh, he's in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> You know, really, honestly, it's one of those places, you know, yep. uh, I know. that you have this draw. It's like, I must go there. So, um, so I'm, yes, that's, well, once that's on my, my list. Down and things can happen back and forth again. It would be great. Yes, it would be. It's, it, it is kind of, yeah, like I said, it's on that list of places I must cool. go. Very good. Well, thank you for talking to me. It's been a real pleasure and uh, hope everything goes well with the album release. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you, uh, you know, letting people know about the album. Um, sure. My website is carrynewcomer.com and you can find out more about uh, the online shows, which are, you know, people from New Zealand uh, are, yeah. are welcome and invited to come and join. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, you know, my albums and books and things okay. like that. Excellent. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you, Marty. You have a great one, too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.